we're starting off uh, video five of our Hyundai series build the i30N. Um, it's taken a turn. It was originally supposed to be about our racing rear muffler and our four inch dump pipe. In that time, a lot of things happened. We went on lockdown massively along with the rest of the country. Uh, there was a few additional lockdowns from there. And then of course there was delays on getting products and parts, etc., etc. So our video five has essentially become about our Dynamotive G25 550 turbo kit. Now, the race rear muffler has been developed as well as our four inch dump pipe, which we've now turned into a three inch dump pipe. Uh, simply because we did a lot of testing during our lockdown, we found the three inch sounded better. The response and the uh, performance was the same. And of course, I was able to lower the price, so you guys benefited from that. So three inch dump pipe and our racing rear muffler available on the website. Video five is now about our G25 550 turbo. So we're stoked with the results. The customer is gonna absolutely love it. And we hope you do too. Yeah, that's it, that's normal. So give it a rev. In this episode, we'll be looking at the Dynamotive rear muffler that we fabricated for the end behind me, as well as the four inch dump pipe up the front. Basically, we've experimented with a lot of the standard rear mufflers uh, and exhaust systems by other manufacturers on our end. We haven't been really satisfied with the results or more importantly, the sound. So we've gone down our own path in fabricating a twin two and a half inch muff, twin muffled system uh, to basically get rid of that um, tin can sort of rattly noise that all you guys are complaining about, give it a deeper engine noise as well as make it a complete bolt-in for you. Okay, so before we pull the engine out of the vehicle, in this case, we take it out from underneath on the K-frame. We basically take some very accurate measurements, measuring every part of the engine, where it would interfere with things like the firewall, the scuttle, and other components in the engine bay to ensure that once we've created and fabricated the turbo kit, we maintain the clearance required. Obviously, the engine's out of the vehicle. We now begin the process of fabricating a custom exhaust manifold. This begins with Rob, one of the engineer, engineers here at Dynamotive. He will basically orientate using CAD a collector. Uh, he then prints a collector out, gives us an idea on the exact angles that we need, the style of merge, and then we can work out the manifold itself from there. So when fabricating a custom exhaust manifold, tubular exhaust manifold such as this one, it's not just a matter of which pipe goes where, there is actually a, a very decent mechanical science behind it as far as using each pulse of each cylinder to help extract the gases from the next cylinder in the firing order, which obviously we take into account when we're fabricating any manifold. We've been able to retain nearly the standard turbo position as what the factory turbo is. Our dump pipe, our three inch dump pipe almost fitted. There was only a few things that we needed to change uh, up towards the top where it's obviously a V-band now. A couple of different angles coming off that V-band to the cap, but it was very close to fit up. All right guys, so we're in the middle of tuning up our, the Hyundai with the G25 550 Turbo on it. Um, wanted to highlight a few quick things about how awesome these platforms really are. This is running a completely standard fuel system, so a standard fuel pump, standard injectors. Rob's in the car dynoing it, so we are data logging everything. So he's watching uh, injector duty cycle as well as fuel pressure. This thing just went 260 kilowatts at 24 pounds of boost uh, at a very safe 12.2 to one. So all the myths about the fuel, uh, the fuel pump and the standard fuel system not being enough. Um, I'm not sure where they start or where they came from, but it just proves that the standard fuel system is more than capable. Uh, so basically what we're doing is, Rob's obviously tuning it, live tuning it using the UniX. We've got our Autel scan tool hooked up. It's quite a, quite a trick little piece of equipment. Basically what it gives us the ability to do is watch the duty cycle, watch the fuel pressure. So I'm watching the duty cycle to see how much we're commanding of the factory injectors, as well as, the, as, well as watching the fuel pressure to make sure it doesn't drop away.
This car came to us completely stock about 12 months ago. Uh, we did a intercooler, dump pipe, uni chip and intake on it. And it started off at about 160 kilowatts, or it, did, it was 160 kilowatts, finished off at 205, which was a really great gain. Customer recently came back to us wanting further power upgrades, which has obviously led, led down the path of our Garrett G25 550 turbo. Um, so basically, the modifications done to this car is a Garrett G25 550 turbo on a custom dynamotive exhaust manifold. It uses the Unichip Unix ECU to tune it. It's got a forge intake, a forge front mount intercooler, a blower valve, um, and that's basically it. So I'll go through the results shortly. There's a few things I wanted to clarify before we, we go down that path. Plenty of people have asked me about the fuel system on this. The fuel system on this Hyundai to achieve 263 kilowatts is completely standard. So standard injectors, standard fuel pump. Basically what that means is after doing a lot of data logging and analyzing the fuel system, there is no reason to change any of those components. Anyone, and we've heard a lot of people talking about high volume fuel pumps, etc. cetera. Uh, we've never found a case or a reason to replace that. So for the numbers people out there at 263 kilowatts, the factory injectors are on 14.7 milliseconds, which equates to 79% duty cycle. What I'll, do, what I'll do now is I'll talk you through the results on the dyno. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start off talking about the power in relation to the boost. Um, Plenty of people have got this misconception that boost pressure is what's relative to creating power when in fact that's nowhere near the case. It's actually air volume that creates power in any turbo application. Um, as you can see here, we've made 263 kilowatts at 22.5 PSI. To think, to put that in relation, the standard turbo is good for about 20 PSI at 200 kilowatts. So we've only brought the boost up by about two and a half pound, but it's about the air volume that the G25 550 creates that the additional air volume that in turn creates the power. This is something that you can't achieve just by replacing a CHRA and a compressor housing. What you can see are three different tunes on the screen. These all relate to three different drive modes in the car. So what I've done is I've tuned up NN Custom as the highest level of power and torque, stepping it down into Sport where you can see I've dropped the boost down to about 18 pound and then down into Eco, which is about 16 pound, but still achieves close to 230 kilowatts. So in every drive mode, this thing's gonna be an absolute weapon. Uh, one last thing, uh, plenty of people are gonna speculate about losing a little bit in the bottom end to gain up the top. Uh, as the director here loves to say, steal from Peter to save Paul. We do have to obviously sacrifice a little bit down low to gain up top by increasing the size of the exhaust housing on the i30N. Uh, realistically, it's not gonna be very, um, you're not gonna feel the effect of it very much on the road. It still picks up 112 kilowatts at 3000 RPM, and between 3000 and 6000 RPM, you go from 112 to 260. So realistically, when you're driving it, you're not gonna notice the difference in that lag that everybody thinks they're gonna feel. Okay, moving on, I've now changed the graph, power over AFR. As I spoke about earlier, the fuel system on this car is entirely standard. After data logging and checking all the AFRs on the dyno, I can show you exactly why. Even at the highest level of power and torque, where it is making 22.5 PSI, we are still a very safe 12.5 to 1 at wide open throttle. On a direct injected engine, this is basically referred to as perfect. From there, you step it down, we head back towards the 12, down into eco mode, and we're back down into the 11 and a half. So there's plenty of fuel to move in these. We're no way, in no way leaning on the injectors or the fuel pump, and we're basically very happy with the result in not having to do anything with the standard fuel system. Uh, I've now brought up the torque on, the on this dyno graph. So what you can see, high power, the torque sits at about 430 newton meters. To a lot of you, that probably doesn't seem like that much of an increase, but what the, the real factor that comes into play here is the fact that it holds that level of torque across a much wider rev range. In fact, all the way to the end of the RPM, uh, which is unachievable on a standard turbo and a standard setup. One last fun one for all the numbers guys out there. Plenty of people, we see it all the time. Other workshops put up graphs that are uh, relative to engine power. Keep in mind, this is a calculation. The only real way to check engine power and torque is to pull the engine out and put it on our engine dyno. But as a calculation, 310 kilowatts and 500 Newton meters is what this is predicted to make at the flywheel. When you consider that these come from factory with 204, the increase is absolutely amazing. All right, 
So one of the features that is on every N that uh, people who don't drive them wouldn't know about, but is actually quite cool. Uh, the taco lights up with some orange lights before it allows uh, basically you to go as hard as you want. It's basically warming up the vehicle so that uh, you know you can make the most of your end mode with your pops and your bangs, and you know it unrestricts a few of the factory uh, safety parameters. So we've just got to take it for a little bit of a short drive, get rid of those yellow lights, and then we can start giving it a bootful. things that people are going to uh, ask uh, is the turbo lag. So as I previously mentioned, we spent a lot of time uh, doing the research to match turbos to engine combinations. Um, Mark, the director of Dynamotive, has been turboing vehicles for well over 30 years, uh, knows basically every turbo and engine combination inside out. Um, so this 25550 is perfectly matched. We do lose a little bit in the bottom end by about 500 RPM obviously to gain a lot in the top end. So what we'll do is when you get to a next stop, we'll slow down. I'll give you a good example of how the boost comes on, how aggressive it is, and uh, and you can basically make your mind up for yourself from there. I mean, you can see on the dyno that it gets up to about 20 pounds of boost by 4,000 RPM. Up to that point, um, 3,000 RPM sees about 10 or 11 pound. Um, so it is still very responsive off the line. Obviously grip is gonna be a big issue. Um, but you can definitely feel it pull right through the rev range, which realistically is what you're chasing. Not many people want, you know, or require power at 1500 RPM. You know, you don't want 25 pounds of boost at 1500 RPM. So it's good to have that really progressive and linear scale of power and torque right across the rev range all the way to Redline. All right, guys, thanks for watching video five of the i30N Dynamotive Build Series. Keep an eye out for video six. This platform's only just beginning to take off. We'll be looking at playing with things like water meth injection and nitrous oxide. So some more fun on the way.